Hi everyone, welcome to Yelai, the place where you get your daily dose of inspiration for entrepreneurship. And today we have with us Mr. Simran Paul Singh, which is who is the co-founder of uh, Pitch Our Way, uh, which is uh, helping startups to stand out in front of investors and make them ready with their uh, pitch tech and financial model. Uh, hi Simran, welcome to Yelai. Hi Priya, hi team ELI. Thanks for inviting me today. A very cheerful day with a lot of festivities around the corner. And just a very happy Independence Day to you and all, all your viewers. Thank you, Simran. Uh, I would uh, request you to introduce yourself to our audience. Sure. So I'm Simran Paul Singh. I'm the co-founder of Picharve. So we at Picharve, we help companies creating all the documentations which are required for the funding opportunities. And then later on, sharing those opportunities or those prospects with the relevant investors for the funding opportunities. Yeah. So me and my co-founder, Vanshka, we have been there in the business from last two and a, almost two years, basically. So prior to starting Picharve, we, we were working with a few of the companies, again, in the same domain of investment banking. There we realized that there is a gap between the founders and the investors. The founders were not ready to share their documentations with the investors for the funding opportunities. So there were a few prospects, which even we realized that they have a good prospect and they have a good chance of uh, building the market or distributing the market. But yes, again, uh, those opportunities were, reject were getting rejected at the initial stage itself. Okay. The reason uh, while we realized was that, that the documentations were not up to the mark or up to the standards of what investors are looking to see. See, each and every founder, they know how to run the business, how they should operate their operations. But yes, what investors is wanted to see and what in what the investment thesis of of a particular investor is we need to highlight those particular information in our pitch check or the financial valuation so that they can also relate to our company and they can see if this is something which interests them or which is something in in their investment thesis and they can have a conversation with the founders in, in the follow-up meetings itself mm -hmm. so they were getting rejected in these stages itself because they were preparing the documents based upon their skills, their idea, but not a few of the points which investors wanted to see. It was missing from the document. So we realized that there is a gap where first we can help founders getting ready to pitch in front of investors. Once they are ready to pitch in front of investors, then we will start circulating the documents with the, uh, with investors. Can you tell us a bit on uh, what our, like you mentioned, there are some points that investors want to see uh, in a pitch deck. Uh, so can you highlight uh, those pointers to us? Because many of our listeners are uh, now actively pitching for investments and they might find very informational. Yes, definitely. See, each and every investor, they have their investment, investment thesis. By investment thesis, what I mean is in what geography they want to invest in, in what geography the company should be in operations, what exactly the market size that particular company is targeting, or what problems, what solutions they are providing for the, their consumers itself. So these are a few of the many points which we need to highlight in, in our document because see, each and every company, they are unique. They are different from each other. So there is no particular template that we need to use in our documentations. We need to make sure that whenever we are creating a document, it should be from the mindset of the investors and not from the mindset of, uh, of our consumers because we realized that a couple of the documents which we were receiving First of all, it was very lengthy. So mm -hmm. when I was working as an investment banking analyst, I used to receive at, at least 20 to 30 pitch decks a day. And if if I need to spend five to 10 minutes on a pitch deck, it would take approximately 100 to 200 minutes of my working schedule itself. So mm -hmm. which will sum up my particular day. Yeah. Apart from the documents which I was receiving, it was at least 60, 70 slides. So we need to make sure that our pitch deck is at max 20 sliders, 25 sliders, depending upon how we are presenting our idea. Mm -hmm. It should be this, it should be short. And yes, obviously, there should not be like a few of the pointers which are not related to our company. We need to make sure that all the points which we are covering in our document, it should be related to what we are exactly doing, not our competitors or any of the other parties. Uh, storytelling, yes, it's important for 
any of the investors or if we need we we, are, uh, we want to highlight that particular thing or we want to pitch yes storytelling is important but we need to make sure that fairy fairy tale stories are not there in our documents because it will definitely make no sense and it will uh, take time for the investors to read doc uh, those documents awesome so before we start uh, discussing more about the venture can you give us a perspective about your background uh, like how is your, how was your childhood and uh, how what kind of education you received and what made you choose entrepreneurship or what landed you in in the path you are uh, continuing right now okay so basically i start i finished my schooling from st lawrence convent the school was based in delhi itself east delhi so uh, me and my co-founder we were both from st lawrence school so one shiva manga she is also from st lawrence school so uh, we we completed our 12th from there and then we landed in a college coincidentally the college was again the same with the same course so we both of us we uh, started our graduation from uh, college of vocational studies in the Econ economic honors course so we completed our graduation and then we enrolled for CFA examination for the uh, Chartered Financial Analyst. So uh, in, in our graduation, we realized that we have soft corner or soft interest in, in uh, the finance field or entrepreneurship field. So we, we, we enrolled for the CFA examinations. We passed our CFA level one examination during our college time itself. And then uh, as as we realized that college was ending, so we enrolled for a few of those uh, internships as well as the job opportunities. And mm -hmm. we got a job, I got a job in Silver Mile Capital, a London-based investment banking firm. So they, uh, after two, three months, uh, or no, after six months even, so once you also joined Silver Mile Capital and then we realized that our uh, basically rule was to filter out the opportunities which we want to share with the investors. Mm -hmm. There we realize that there is a gap between the founders, what the founders are presenting to the investors and what investors want to see. See, uh, when we were having a conversation with the founders, it was prior to we see a pitch deck. But this is not the case when we are pitching to investors. First, investors, they will be going through our pitch deck and then they will be having a conversation with the founders. It was reversal in, in our case. When we are having a conversation with the founders, first, we have a word with the founders. If we realize that this is something which will interest us or if we are even putting our money in the company, then we will be taking up that prospect. Okay. So after having a word with the founders, we receive a good amount of confidence from those founders. We take up the prospect. We started sharing the documentations with the with the investors. But then again, it, they were getting rejected even before having a word with the founders. The reason was very simple. The documentations were missing something or it was lengthy or not matching the prospect of what investors wanted to see or what investors investment thesis are. So there we realized that we can help companies in the documentations part first and then sharing the documentation with the founder. So we divide funding as a two phase process, not a one phase uh, process. In the phase one, we help companies with the documentations part, pitch deck, financial model, uh, RV valuation, business plan, again, depending upon what all documents are required for that particular company. Mm -hmm. See, we are not a sales company where we want to sell all our documents. So as of now, we have worked with 750 companies. Mm -hmm. But for the documentation part, we have worked with only 500 companies. So for 250, rest of the 250 companies, we have held them in the grooming sessions, in the sales pitch. So these are the services which we are also providing. So, uh, but but for the rest of the 500 companies we have helped them with the documentations and if i again divide those 500 companies we have only provided business plan to 20 companies itself because business plan document these are required or rv valuation these are required at a later stage or uh if there's any particular investor who wants these documents we only advise those companies for these documents so not only selling all the documents but yes advising them mentoring them what all documentations are required okay since you have uh, talked briefly about the venture, uh, I would love to understand as a business, how do we make money? What is our business model and what are the different streams of revenue that we generate? Okay. As I discussed previously as well, we divide funding as a two-phase process. So we charge for both the phases. For the phase one, 
uh, for the documentation part, we charge a minimal upfront fee for the documentations. So the fees, again, it varies from the complexity of the business. If there is a startup, an early stage startup who only have an idea, then there's there are only minimal charges. But yes, again, if the company have already done their operations or they have a scalable path or they have uh, something to show to the investors or they have already proven traction, so it will increase the complexity of the documentations because we need to work upon the uh, financial valuation from the audited financial. So again, so this is for the phase one and for the phase two, if there is a company of ours and we are sharing those prospects with the found, uh, with the investors for funding opportunities and by our pool of investors, that particular company is able to close the fundraise round. So whatever the amount our pool of investors have uh, make the commitments or not the commitment basically if that particular amount have hit the company's bank account then we'll be charging success fee from those companies so there are two models for us first is upfront payment for the documentation part and if there is a company who have a good document and we can just kick start the phase two itself then there are no charges for the phase one we will just be charging on the success fee model okay awesome so uh now would love to understand how do you make sure that companies reach out to you or uh, in other words what's your marketing model that you follow to yeah. generate enough leads so that you can help them uh, to uh, pitch investors or raise funding so our biggest source of getting clients if i can say <laughs> is the word of mouth so since i have already spoken that we have worked with 750 plus companies so Every month, we received at least 10 to 12 companies by our already working clients. So, they, they, see, uh, if if I'm a founder, if I'm a startup founders, my connects or my friends would automatically become the founders of multiple startups. So, they refer our services to them because they, they, they require pitch tech, they require financial model. Uh, not all founders are from the financial background. So, we need to help we we help them in creating the relevant document with the valuation which is obviously possible to showcase to the investors so mm. they refer us to their um, their connect of uh, their connect of startup founders so mm. major part of our revenue is coming from uh, the word of mouth marketing and other yes we are also working upon the seo digital marketing uh, the social media advertisement so uh, rest of the clients we are getting from there Okay. Curious to know, uh, when you started your venture, how did you get, so word of mouth uh, works only when you have certain number of clients and mm -hmm. they have got some success out of uh, your uh, product or services. Uh, but uh, even before that, when you, uh, when you got your first client and uh, you got your even first prospect to pitch, uh, how did you find that client or how did you generate that lead? Okay, so uh, there are a couple of my friends who are startup founders. So uh, my first client itself was one of my friends who was looking for the fundraise opportunities and who was going to pitch in front of investors. So my first client was that particular friend. Mm -hmm. And as soon as we received uh, the payment from, uh, from that particular client, we didn't took a single penny in our pocket and we started investing in our company and uh, we started doing digital marketing services from the first day itself and the second client itself it was from the word of mouth from that particular friend okay so you can see our first or second client are referral clients awesome awesome <laughs> uh now the next question comes to my mind is on the uh, growth and team size how I, I saw that there are around 18 employees uh, working with you uh, that I saw on LinkedIn. So can you tell us uh, how your company is structured? What are the kind of people who work with you? So, uh, because it's a different kind of organization. So would love to understand how, how your workforce is divided. How do you hire them? How did you find these people? And uh, what, is, what is the growth plan from now? What kind of company you are becoming uh, day by day? Okay, so basically we have three heads. So me, Vanshika and Arjun. So Arjun look after all the financial aspect, financial modeling, financial valuation. He does all that operation. So we three are the heads of the company. So uh, how we started operations, we started making individuals under each of 
each of our company or each of our brand. So mm-hmm. when there were six individuals under Vanshika, six under me and six under Arjun. So we have an operation like this. So there's an HR who help us hiring all the employees. And yes, so they have been individuals working under Arjun for the financial aspect. They have been individuals working under Vanshika under pitch tech aspect. And they have been few which, which are common, which are working upon pitch tech and financial valuation. And both Arjun and Vanshika are looking after those individuals. And I have been working upon the digital marketing space, investors connect space, and in uh, in basically expanding our operations in multiple geographies, not only in India, not only staying in India, but yes, in multiple geographies as well. Okay. Tell us some success stories of your uh, business. What are some of the famous uh, uh, businesses that have raised funds through you? Okay. So one of our portfolio company named Easy Schooling, they have... In, in I guess in October, they have closed their fundraise round. The amount was undisclosed, but yes, they have closed their pre-series, uh, pre-seed round in October. And again, so they, they are, they're going for the bridge round of fundraising. We have, uh, for the second time, uh, have done the pitch tech and financial valuation services. And we have started circulating their documentations with investors for funding opportunities. Apart from this, there are a few of the other companies, for example, Sprint QR, which is based in Singapore. They have closed their fundraise round. Apart from this, a company named Green Rhino. So the company is based in Canada, North American market space. They have also closed their fundraise round. So there have been a company named Shanmuga Hospitals in uh, in the south part of India. So mm-hmm. they are creating a chains of hospitals. So they have also closed their fundraise round. So they have been a couple of companies. If I speak not only in the fundraise part, so we have also been advising them on how to increase their sales. So we do not just for the sake of documentation or for the sake of funding, just take up the prospect. So they have been few companies without traction, but yes, they have an idea which they can expand. And just once they have expansion, they have traction, then we can kickstart for the Investors Connect. So they have been few companies like these for whom we have been helping with their uh, growth prospect increasing sales, increasing revenues. So there have been at least 60 plus companies to for whom we haven't taken their mandate. But yes, we have advised them on how they can expand their operation or increase their sales. Got you. What would you say are the, some of the biggest challenges that you have faced during your entrepreneurial journey? Okay, so one of the biggest challenges, if, if I can say, is uh, making the founders, the startup founders realize their actual valuation. So uh, in the last couple of years, I have observed that they have been uh, a bubble on on the valuation part. Mm. So uh, looking after the valuation of their competitors, the startup founders start realizing that their valuation should be, if not exactly, but yes, close to what their uh, competitors' valuation is. So making them understand that, no, this is, not how we should be pitching in front of investors. We just can't copy the valuation of, of our competitors and just make a financial report based upon their operations. We have our separate operations. As a startup founder, we have our different operations. So based upon our revenue stream, our uh, cost assumptions, we need to work upon the valuation. So this has been the biggest challenge, if I can say that uh, the valuation, we need, we need to come up with a valuation which is actually possible the numbers it should be growing with a healthy rate so making them understood this particular point this have been challenges challenging but yes as of now this is becoming a bit easy because charter founders have started realizing that we just can't go with any number any valuation figure to the investors hmm. as an entrepreneur uh, i think you would agree that uh, entrepreneurship is a uh tough journey and very intense journey where uh, you have to stay energetic all the time. Mm. However, uh, there would be instances when you just lose focus, tired, restless. And uh, when that happens, the business suffers. Like you mentioned, you are responsible for expansion of your business, the marketing side of it. Uh, And uh, if you are not focused, then your company cannot grow. So how do you manage such situations? How do you come out of these loads and uh, make sure that you are again up and running, uh, taking your venture forward? 
Okay. So if I can say, I can start this answer by saying that one of our biggest USP is that we have a team. We have a strong team. So Arjun, he have been involved in uh, at least 600, 700 financial valuation itself. And this understanding for not only creating the financial model, but understanding how we should flow the financial model is absolutely mind blowing. So we have a good team. So uh, for the expansion part or for any of the particular thing, how we do is that we have three heads. So on every two months, uh, only one individual or two individuals will be working for a week time and uh, the third individual, he will be going for a vacation. So we, we have this particular model so that we can just freshen up our mind because creating or doing one one particular thing each and every day, it's it's kind of boring thing as well. So mm -hmm. we make sure that see our operations are from our, our workstations is our laptop. So we can just take our laptops, go for uh, for a vacation in any of the hill station and work from there as well. So mm -hmm. we make sure that we have a good ample time for us for for our me time itself so that we can just focus on what how we are doing, what we are doing and we can we just have our time itself. So making sure that at least two individuals are working and one if he wants he can just take a break and just he can just go for the vacations hmm. and uh, this haven't yeah. to be honest this has been a good thing for us so the third individual once he's back his productivity increases by 2x rate right that's so true um another question coming to my mind uh, i'm just thinking that uh as a because you meet a lot of startups i assume that you would be having a lot of meetings uh, in a day uh, mm. and uh, that 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 would be a very time consuming process just curious to know how do you manage your time how does your calendar look like in a typical day how many hours do you work uh, and all okay so there have been few days where i started not only me uh, both vanshika and arjun even they just turn on their laptops at 8 a.m. in the morning and they turn off their laptops at 10 p.m. In, in the night itself. So there have been a few days uh, where this 10 p.m. have been extended to 3, 3 a.m. in the morning as well. So there have been a couple of days, but yes, uh, we have learned from this how we should be planning our both professional and personal life. So uh, we what we are doing is uh, for the day to be coming tomorrow, for let's suppose for uh, so today's Saturday, so we will be scheduling our calendar for Sunday as a, uh, on Saturday itself. So mm -hmm. if, if we are doing this particular thing, both it will help both uh, of us as well as our portfolio companies itself. So they, they know that we have a meeting schedule on Sunday. So they will be coming up on those meetings. They'll be having conversations. If they have any doubts on their funding related issues, we can solve, the, solve those doubts on those particular days. And then we can just kick off our next day itself on monday itself mm. so we do this particular thing where we schedule our calendar for the following day on a previous day itself mm. but yes uh the starter founders or being a starter founders this have been hectic solving uh keeping up the schedule or keeping balance in the personal as well as in the professional life this have been a big uh, issue as well okay uh, one of the entrepreneurs who came to this platform commented that uh, you must judge a founder on, on the uh, basis of number of failures he or she <laughs> has had uh, during the entrepreneurial journey. Uh, so can you tell us about some of the interesting or big failures uh, that uh, you have gone through as an entrepreneur? Okay, so there have been occasions where, if if not failure, but yes, off days, if I can say, they have been off days. So three of us, Arjun, me, Vanshika, we fight every day. You, mm -hmm. you won't believe that if you are in the meetings with three of us, you will realize how these three guys are working with each other. We fight a lot. Each and every day, there have been occasions that we are shouting on each other. But yes, again, at the end of the day, once... See, we, we all three realize that they have been an off day for a particular individual. So the remaining two of them, they realize that they it have been an off day. So they understand that particular point. And once we, we are done with the operations, we have a fun call at in the night, in the evening, so that the mood or each and everything get freshened up. So if I if I if I I can't say that uh, it has a failure, but yes, they have been multiple off days, not multiple. Each and every day is off day for a particular individual. So we three are working. So, uh, 
for example, if they have been a workload pressure on one of the individuals, so it will be showcasing on his attitude or in, in his behavior. And we do understand this particular thing. If we are working upon multiple projects at the same time, there could be incidents where we are mixing up two projects and it, it will be highlighted in the documentations. So for this particular reason, what we we uh, we exactly are doing is that whenever we complete a pressure of financial model, we make sure that there is one superior individual who is reviewing that document so that there is no miscommunication or gaps in our documentation due to our off days. So they have been a couple of off days. We fight a lot. So we three of us are young individuals. So each and everyone as uh, the age of each of individual is approximately 25 only. So mm. they have a few off days, but yes, we know how we are tackling that uh, those things. What is the meaning of entrepreneurship for you? How would you define the term entrepreneur? Okay, so for me, uh, not only being a CEO, CFO, CTO is an entrepreneur. So each and every individual who makes decision for expansion, doesn't matter if the decision is right or wrong. If he has the capability of taking the decision and making sure that if that decision is going against that individual as well, he has the capability of taking taking those pressure, then he's an entrepreneur. It doesn't matter the position. To be honest, it doesn't matter. I have seen few of the CEOs not even making the decisions. And few of the managers' positions, they are taking the decisions. And they have the capability of taking the risk. So any individual who is taking the risk is an entrepreneur for me. Okay. My final question. What is the most interesting lesson that you have learned uh, during your entrepreneurial journey? Okay. So to be honest, I have I, I have worked with at least 20 startups a day. I, I listen to 20 ideas each and every day. So each and every day, whenever I am having a conversation with the, with the founders, I realized ki yaar, aisa bhi kuch ho sakta hai, aisa bhi kuch ho sakta hai. So in India, the startup ecosystem is just starting. So uh, it's not, definitely it's not in the peak. It's just starting. I have encountered a few of the individuals who is only 18 mm -hmm. and they're coming up with such a brilliant idea, which can definitely, which have the potential and it can beat few of their biggest competitors itself because of their USPs. So this has been a learning for me that it doesn't matter if you are from IIT, IIM. It doesn't matter. To be honest, if you have the skills, if you have you have the idea and you know how to implement those ideas, mm -hmm. then you are going to be successful in your life. So only keeping the idea, it doesn't matter. You need to implement those ideas on, and how you're implementing that. It, this has been a learning for me. There have been individuals who, uh, who are just past their 12th and who are, uh, who are just landed in their colleges mm -hmm. with a brilliant idea which they have and even not only the idea. The, the way they are implementing those ideas, it's tremendous. Well, thanks for your timing, uh, time, uh, Simran, and thanks for joining us. It was a pleasure to have you on our platform and our best wishes for Pitch Our Way. Thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to be, to the part, uh, to be part of this opportunity. So it's a great conversation. Uh, it's good to be part uh, to be part of the startup ecosystem, contributing to the startup ecosystem. So yes, all the best to you as well. Thank you.